had the McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am back with the original favorite, my life partner in comedy, Chris Frangiola. Thank you. Haven't, I'm back. I haven't seen you since um, our fun traveling time together. Our, tr- our trip. In the Hamptons. Uh, well, I wasn't in the Hamptons. Oh, that's right. I was just in New Jersey and uh, Long Island, Huntington, and Foxwoods. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I was, which was great. It was all great. It, it was. wasn't the Hamptons, but it yes. was great. We had our little car driving from city to city. We did. It was wonderful. It really was fun. And um, we had some moments in the car that, again, how the universe was just like coming at us. Remember we were talking about our friend Paul Reeder? Yeah. And then like all of a sudden he texted me. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I had so many crazy moments like that where someone would enter my mind and then they would immediately text me or it's, or something would pop up on my phone. Yeah, that was a fun little chat, Paul Reader. Haven't talked to him in a while. Yes. Yeah, you know, just about crazy friends and stuff. It's wild. Yeah, like just our fun our fun life together. I was going to ask you as I was driving here. Yes. I felt like I was getting ready today to come to this podcast and I thought to myself, you know, I don't get ready for it much anymore. And do you miss like working in an office? Did you ever, no. you ever miss like working with you know, we on Chelsea lately, we used to have to go in every day and be surrounded by hundreds of people. I honestly don't miss it at all. Really? I don't know. I really don't. I, I mean, I like coming here, and sometimes when I'm sort of by myself, it's fine. Yeah. I think there's enough in the week where I do see people or I go out and do something. Right. So, I mean, I love not driving okay, over yeah. the hill. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's good. And like, you know, yeah. so that part... Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't. Do you, are you? Do you miss? Sometimes it? It on my like podcast, people <laughs> tell me I talk too much about Chelsea lately, and I say the only reason I talk about it is because the last time I was around people, like I haven't really been around people since then. I haven't well, worked in a group atmosphere. Listen, so, I have here something I for you. Yeah, they sent it to me. Yeah, but it's card really for, for Chris me Frangiola. to your studio. My apologies, I don't have a mailing address for Chris's cover to yeah. cover. So let's see what it is. Let's open it together. Well, let, let's hope this is good because this could be. This is terrible. Oh, it's just happy birthday to a fun guy. When was your birthday? May twenty first. Oh, I, oh I remember them. They were sweet people. They were oh, in Chicago. Oh, they're cute. Okay, so there's nothing. Very nothing cute. scary. No. There's no anthrax. No, you never know. Yeah, this, All right. this is your daughter. You know, a picture of a kid. No, no nothing. Oh, that. speaking of which, I got someone who wrote me an email who said, um, "I think my friend Mike." is the son that you gave up for adoption. Oh. Wait, did you give up a kid for adoption? No. Yeah. But what I thought was kind of juicy is like, I wonder if someone's just putting this out there to a ton of celebrities to see if all of a sudden- That's interesting. Like in my past, I gave up. So I wrote, wow, how old is he? Yeah. Just, I'm going to see if they write me back. Yeah. That's- that's easily traceable, isn't it? I mean, there'd be a picture of you pregnant or something. Um, not really, because you know, um, I remember uh, there's this like religious retreat that they do at the Catholic school uh-huh. called Kairos, and you basically go for three days, and it's really juicy. It's, it's like people, and you get asked to do it as if you're a junior. They ask you to do it as a junior, so you can be like the senior leader. What, what's juicy about it? You go to the mountains. You or? have to have a juicy story to be a leader. Oh. Like your dad died, something oh. tragic happened, oh. something like that. Kind of like uh, that same thing to win America's Got Talent. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> you have to have something. So I had told McKinsey, you know, like when she was going to school, right. I was like, ooh, I had some juicy stories. And then this um, girl that babysat for us that was between, you know, just a little older than McKinsey, she told she had a really juicy story. Well, okay. when this girl was the leader and she revealed that like remember when i was sick you know last year and everyone thought i had this thing well i didn't i had a baby and i gave it up for adoption 
And I was like, wow. I said to the girl, I go, I thought I had some juicy stories back in the 80s because girl's boyfriend was a Coke dealer. It's a good one. You know, her dad was an alcoholic. Some yeah. other person's dad was an alcoholic. A teacher had a juicy story about an ex-husband. I was like, I thought I, you know, and um, so then when I go to pick her up, I'm like, how was it? She's like, it's fine, but nobody had any juicy stories. No one had any juicy <laughs> stories at all. Oh, no. And then I remember I didn't tell my juicy story, which is like my, you know, right. parents yelling and fighting and uh-huh. my weird brothers and everything, because I was like, listen, these people see my parents as these perfect realtors. Right. If I share <clears throat> yeah and believe me i want the therapy moment i want the tears i want i yeah. can i know i can tell a juicy story i didn't know i had to wait 35 years until patreon existed to right. tell the juicy stories <laughs> i wanted to tell it then Just but i was it. smart enough to know if i really tell the truth about my dysfunctional irish catholic family yeah these people might go home and then their parents might be like oh we're thinking of listing our house with bob and pam mcdonald and then that girl might be like mom they are fucked up. Yeah. So I was like, shit. And so then I, then my story was, I wish I could share with you the real juice about my life. Oh, that's a tease. But I can't. Oh, you should Because have we that. need to get as many listings as possible so I can go to USC. Right. <laughs> well, I think I, mean, I'm, I, I feel kind of bad talking about it because it is a really nice retreat and I'm sure it's yeah. different now. I'm just saying. They don't encourage people to bring their. Terrible stories, like stories that I think it's of more, trauma I think it's anymore. More, I don't, hopefully it's not as traumatic because yeah. I think a lot of like now our generation's going and I think like, you know, right. I'm, I'm like, hey, kids. Yeah. Don't be spilling any Heather McDonald juicy scoop in I your mean, in your in your you yeah. know therapy session on on this retreat. I just feel it's so funny that I mean because I hung around the Catholic Church a lot too, and yeah. I wasn't really like we were church going people, but nothing crazy. You know, we went for communion, confirmation, yeah. and then you know the midnight mass, right? But then you know then my other friends on the block were all you know Catholic, yeah. So I, we would go and hang out with them. And, you know, I would tell you, I've told the story before in here that I would work out for the priests. Like we would do lift weights. It seems so strange now, but I don't, you know, and nothing beyond that. Yeah. Just guys get a good pump going. We were like 12 and then we would do ca- contests. <laughs> well, my. So that's my truth. If I had to tell a traumatic story in the woods with on a camp getaway, I would say I worked out one time and I lost every time. I mean. My brother was at one of the schools. Yeah. And he hated it and left and went to a public school. And I was like, why did he leave that school, mom? And she said, oh, I don't know. You know, he's saying oh, that the typing teacher always was rubbing his back and he didn't like it. Well, 35 years later, the, the, he was like, got in tr- He was, um, you know. The typing teacher? Yeah. He oh, was. really? He was. Wow. He was, you know. Um and f- found out and convicted and all this other stuff. Yeah. But it was many, many, many years later. Yeah. So when also when people are like, you know, think I'm like a hypocrite, whatever, sending my kids to Catholic school. Me personally, my family, w- we had a very wonderful experience. So did I. And our parish has, you know, been safe. Yeah. So, but of course, all this weird yeah. stuff happens. <laughs> and, you know, and I just remember like, I remember like wanting to be a nun. Yeah. But, but I didn't know, I didn't want to be a nun, but I felt guilty for not being a nun. And so I, one time we went to the, one time at school, this nun came Mm -hmm. and they said, oh, we have this like traveling nun. That's like a Ted talker, you know, like this, we're so excited to have her. She's going to tell the best story. Right. So she comes in and she tells a story about when she was a little girl and all of a sudden the light of the window came in and she felt like Jesus come sit down and put his arm around her. And that's when she knew she was going to be a nun and give her life to Jesus Christ, oh. you know? And she got the calling. She got the calling. And well, I was so freaking scared. Waiting for the call. That I was going to get the call because I go, I don't really want to be. Right. And I go, and I remember I told my sister, I'm like, I'm so scared to get the calling because I just, <sighs> like, I don't, I wouldn't hate to be a nun, but like, I don't want to be a nun. I'm like, could I yeah. be a nun? After I get married, have kids, and my husband dies, right? then I'll be a nun and live in the convent with the other nuns and yeah. pray. But I don't want to do it now. And also there was some movie where like these people were becoming nuns and 
part of it was like they would cut their hair. So like, and the priest would do it, which is so mean. And he would just like cut like that in a choppy, not even like a cute hairstyle. No, really. And yeah, they I weren't don't... allowed to have long hair or whatever. Certain they were never. Yeah, I mean the nuns I knew were all eighty. Right. Well, yeah. there's like very few nuns now. Yeah. And um, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't realize this, the real story about nuns until I was showing the nuns a house with my mom. Right. They needed to buy like another five bedroom house because they they were at the convent at Our Lady of Malibu and they were at the convent at, at St. Mel's and like they needed another house. And so these were like the Louisville, my high school nuns. And I said, um, so now how, and that house wasn't, you know, this is a long time ago. So whatever, it was like 700,000 for like a five bedroom house in West Hills. Yeah. And, and these were like nuns that could drive and work. Like they were like, you know, not old. Right. And I said, so who does, do you guys get a loan or just the archdiocese pays for the house? Like, uh -huh. how are we doing this? And the nun goes, glory be to God. They don't give us a penny. We're our own corporation. Oh, I didn't know that. And I did not realize yeah. that. The priests are taken care of forever. Right. And a the nun are, is like their own little thing. They're out on you the street. You have to like, yeah, so you yeah. have to donate or they, that's why they have, would become nurses and teachers and all that. Yeah. Because they had to like have some type of income. That's not. To keep it they, going. They didn't show that in Sister Act. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's talk about some juicy stuff. You, yeah. you were – oh, the Hamptons. The Hamptons was really – Yeah, I asked you before we came to air, how was the Hamptons? You were out there. The Hamptons was very fun and, um, um, you know, everyone's always like, oh, you have a great life. It looks like you're, you're fun. You got to be with your sorority sisters. You know, I had that fun four or five days between the sh last show with you right. and the show in the Hamptons. And of course, I like to dwell on the one person that writes something mean. Right. And though I'm ch I'm ch turning a leaf, I'm not going to do that anymore. But uh -huh. one last time, they said, I mean, really? Like, she just loves to stay, be away from her husband and kids. And then, you know, I'm like, at least yeah. one person was like, well, I think, and does it really make sense to fly back and forth? Well, I would. Right. You no, know, I would. And then they said, well, that's very misogynistic. You know, Chris Frangiola travels all the time and he has a three-year-old daughter and her sons are She's 17. Four. Sorry, four. <laughs> yeah. And his her her sons are, right. you know, 17 and 20. And one's already back at college and the 17-year-old yeah. drives. And, um, and like, I don't think my 17-year-old is... And they're like, yeah, but Chris talks about how he misses his child. And I'm like, have I not talked enough about that I missed my kid as a missing mom? Yeah. I mean, as a working mom? I don't know if I... Yeah, well, if it makes me any better of a father, I went to a kid's birthday party this weekend. It was 105 degrees in their backyard, and I stood there for hours, watched the cake melt, watched kids whack, whack at a pinata. I've never seen a pinata go well, ever. Never seen it go well. Either somebody gets hit with a stick or- Or somebody is like traumatized because they can't hit it or it's like funny or- I always feel like an adult finally has to break it down. Well, this is what happened. Yeah. They got- First of all, it's made out of big, thick cardboard. These kids are four. There's no way anybody was going to break into this. It wasn't- The physics were off. The yeah. way it was shaped, it was like, there's no way. So every kid takes a whack. They're all- uh, it's all, first of all, it's been sitting in the backyard for 105 degrees for five hours. So whatever's inside it is a mess. <laughs> you know, whatever candy's in there Melt is disgusting. just all in a ball. And they're, all the kids are whacking at it. And then a woman turns to me, she goes, Chris, do you just want to break it open? And I was like, well, no, because what if I can't break it? <laughs> That's going to be real embarrassing. And then my daughter's like, Dad, you're strong. You do it. I'm like, yeah, but honey, I'm now I'm explaining physics to her. Like, if the stick's not heavy enough, the cardboard's thick. <laughs> She's like, just go back. Finally, some old man starts to whack it, and he can't get into it. And then they just tear it up with their hands, and the kids all grab the shit out of it. And it was wild. But that's why. And is a pinata now considered like cultural appropriation? I don't, like you shouldn't have a pinata. They were Spanish, so maybe there's that. But so they're allowed. Also, it's terrifying you because you couldn't have a pinata. You buy the pinata of whatever the child likes the most. Say it's the girl from Frozen. You know, they're like, and oh. then they're beating and then they watch them. Oh. They watch them get strung up from a tree and beaten to beaten beaten with a stick. I remember it's there was Dora the Explorer, and I thought that was awful. I know. They just here she's a little girl with a backpack. And we're beating the shit out yeah, of her. Yeah, we but, did it with Peppa for my daughter. But because she, Dora, is Mexican. You could probably do it. You could probably do yeah. it. Yeah. 
don't know. But anyway, it was a hot party and I was there. And I look like father of the year because I'm more I – I feel some parents just let their kids just go wild. And I, I'm helicopter, they call it, but I'm only helicopter because I don't want to talk to the other parents. Oh, interesting. So it's a great excuse to get away. You're like, oh, my daughter's I'm, eating I'm too the, many cake pops. Got to run. I'm the opposite. Really? I love to talk <clears throat> to everybody and be social. I know. And But what would happen is – the boys learned how to swim really young, like yeah. Peter taught them, or I don't know, they just figured it out. And um, but Brandon was so little, and people would not believe that he could swim, and he could go under and stay under yeah. for a long time. And I was at a party, like a nice party, where the kids were swimming and the adults were like wearing cute outfits, and right. someone jumped in. Oh, to save? To save Brandon. Yeah. yeah. And I was just sitting having a Chardonnay. I was like, he can hold his breath. <laughs> I know. They always look like dr- Yeah, my daughter, same thing. She's a good swimmer, but she looks like she's drowning because she comes up <laughs> and then goes back. <laughs> so it's always, it's always terrifying. We, um, I know you see a lot of this, but I just didn't know if you saw this. Um, there it is. There it is. This is in El Aurora, Texas. Mm-hmm. They put a big sign up in the city. Yeah. You're choosing to hurt your family by being the only Android user. And I know you get a lot of, I, yeah. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. I believe in being inclusive. Yeah. Even though people, everybody. Even, pe- even though people accuse me of a lot of things that are right. not about being inclusive. Uh-huh. I feel like your choice of iPhone right. or, well, they don't call it an iPhone when it's an Android, but yeah. cellular mobile device mm-hmm. right. is your right yeah. as a human being, uh, thank regardless you. of thank your you. sexual orientation, Thank you. how much money you have. Thank you. I don't care that it comes up a different color. I didn't even know that until someone t- had told, I get shamed more for this phone than anything. And you could shame me for many things. But this phone, I get shamed well, for. Well, I'm not. I think it's mean. I appreciate that. I think it's really mean. And I just uh, want people to know I'm, an, a- people. I'm an ally of Thank Android you. users. It's very nice of you. I don't identify as an Android. I don't right. have any Android users in my family. You don't? No. But I believe that you have rights. Can I tell you why yes. I'm an Android user? And this, sorry to bore everybody, but I originally started out many years ago on T-Mobile. Back when that was frowned upon, T-Mobile used to be like the... You know, cricket wireless. Of, okay. You know, it was it was it was the like the poor people one. Okay. But I went over to T-Mobile, got myself a phone. They didn't have iPhones at the time. T-Mobile, they do now. Yes. So they gave me a Samsung Galaxy, and I proudly used it, not knowing that it was frowned upon. Then it started to. How do you feel like? Hey, I would not. I would not want to learn anything. That's new why myself. I don't want to go, go. Yeah, because yeah, everything so just goes you. over. Like, you move you on to the next one; it goes over easily. I mean, you're gonna give into peer pressure as no. a man in your fifties? No. no, 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 absolutely not. But anyway, I enjoy. Chris, it. I saved this topic for you. For, just I could have talked it. about it yesterday. Chose not to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, because I got. S- and just like that, we had the season finale of the uh, second season. Yeah. Let's just go through the episode. Let's go through the season we haven't talked about in a while. Let's yeah. just go through each character, and then we kind of discuss it. That way, if you're not watching it, you're going to still enjoy this discussion. I'll quickly say this. Yes. I believe there's too many characters now. 100%. Yeah. They need to cut a few. Way too many t- characters. They were picked up for season three, so there will be a season three. And there's just, they have to, if, I feel like they're rushing everything. Like, yeah. you know, the director shows up. We'll get to that in a second. Um and, you know, next thing you know, they're in love. It was like That's, literally was, oh my God, 10 I was just, minutes okay, of the episode. So, so you guys, there's a character that is um, Carrie's new friend. And she's a realtor. And she is Samantha 2.0. Yeah. Like she's never been married, no kids, doesn't necessarily want to be sexy, powerful, all this stuff. Yeah. She gets a client who's a director. And exactly that. All of a sudden, she says, I'm in love. He's like, I'm in love with you. I have to go film this This all movie. happens within like three minutes of Yeah, of why don't you come drop everything? Because I have to go to Morocco or whatever for five months. Won't you come with me? Yeah, that was very bizarre. And yeah. it felt, I mean, there's so many things that are like exactly the same. Even we have the big moment with Samantha calling, when, in which she allegedly yes. got paid a million dollars for, good for her. And she calls it in was the good. car. And she's like, hi, darling, it's me. I... I am so upset I can't come to your party tonight to say goodbye to your apartment. 
And she's like, oh, I didn't know you were coming, lady. And then, you know, she said, or London. And she said, well, of course I would. I wasn't going to miss this moment. I'm like, first of all, you already said goodbye to the apartment when you showed up with the two bottles of champagne to clean out her closet before she married Big. Yeah. We already said goodbye to it. I know. Then she bought it back in the movie and then kept it as like whatever, a workspace. Like, why would you have to say goodbye to get like it's so stupid? I feel like who's ever writing the show now is so lazy. Didn't look back at any of the no. because you talked about the like there was they a guy who was characters. dead that's now back alive. Yeah, yeah. They say the the realtor had the same storyline as Samantha when her bag got stolen, her purse, exact same storyline. Samantha had a storyline with the Richard guy where she said I love you, and then she got paranoid that he's cheating. Yeah. I mean, it's very lazy writing. But then we have the new stuff, right? In the post twenty twenty world, of this the you know we have to really know about the sexuality like we really have to know. Oh, it was a lot about. Well, the funny thing is, here's what I find: like it's I don't hate it. So you no, watch it. I'll and never there, stop. There watching are parts it. that are good, and then something absolutely ridiculous will have me like, oh my god, this is so cheesy. Like they have to beat you over the head with everything. Like how long and boring and unnecessary. Was the character of the professor Naya getting the guy, the older professor, coming in and giving her the award? Literally a six minute scene. Uh, who cares? I, th- see, I also think that these people, that guy who gave her the award, he yeah. must be somebody that I'm supposed to know. Like a, but, like a famous actor? Yeah, or famous something? actor or famous professor. I feel like Michael Patrick King or Sarah Jessica Parker, they must owe people favors because there's some bad acting from like the smaller parts. Even from the big parts. I know. Okay, so let's then get into other things that don't make sense. Steve decides he went to Coney Island one day yeah. and is like, oh, I'm going to make this little Coney Island hot dog stand a g- real gourmet, cool place or it's yeah. going to be hip and cool. Meanwhile, when when Carrie and Aiden visit him, they're like, wow, it took three trains to get here. This is a horrible business yeah. idea. Who, like, no chic person is going to be, like, coming down there. It's just going right. to be, hey, let me have a hot dog. Or it doesn't matter yeah. if you make it cool, if you make it. And I, I guess he's not deaf anymore, so that's no, that, nice. No, that went out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> that was a big storyline that he couldn't hear anything. and um, Well, you know we have to. Well, he did speak Spanish in this episode because he was talking to the guy who was working at his restaurant. And isn't that a funny joke when someone tries to speak Spanish and, and then he the goes, Spanish person is like, speaking. Yeah. He goes, come on, come on, start, you know. <laughs> Wait, let's I, do it. Because I'm going to show up as Miranda. God, I got, and I we're going to we're gonna improv the scene. Because he's really. He, doesn't have to be exactly the same. We can talk his about wife, anything. She, it's getting even worse this okay, year. keep doing Go. Because now he's like, now he's like slurring too. He's like, this is, this I, I think we made the right decision here because it's the best thing for me. And I, I, I. <laughs> Steve, I don't know. I, I've been through a lot. I mean, I, when I met you, I was Harvard educated and I was a professor, not a professor. I was Harvard educated and I was a partner of a law firm. But I just want to throw that all away and I want to be an intern at the U.N., and have a roommate. And yeah, I can't. I can't go down that roller coaster again. Of you know, it's just like it's everything. You're gonna go back to being lesbian and straight. I can't do it anymore. I got this. I'm selling beers at Coney Island here. Como esta usted? Steve, I can't have a beer. I'm also an alcoholic. Remember? <laughs> no, but that but went out the window. Whatever happens with Brady, and I'm upset that Brady's not going to college. That he's gonna work at the Coney Island stand. While screwing Charlotte's adopted daughter, Lily. (laughs) And how many more times can our weird-looking son pop up behind us? He's he's like the clown in It. He just keeps popping up behind them. (laughs) Okay, so they they have the party. She's having her goodbye party with the Michelin star chef, which, of course, why would she invite Bobby Lee and the girl, his girlfriend or wife, that ruined her Met Ball dress. I know. And, you and, think you're still going to hang out with those people and let them sit at your dinner where mm-hmm. it's $600 a plate? And had like her own like a scene where they had to all do a word or whatever. Yeah, she like, hey, a... Storm, what do you think? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I want to get rid of Storm. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just, I don't know why they're there. It's like, literally, if you were going to have a dinner party and you're like, I want to put together an eclectic group 
because I am an older white woman and I have no eclectic friends. Right. So I'm going to put 12 people together, seven of which I have nothing in common with. Right. Like, yeah. it was just... <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, I mean, the whole thing with, uh, you know, the anal sex. Wow. Wow. But it was, I don't, I listen, I got it, but I got it a lot. Like, I mean, they, I was like, they beat you over the head with that one. I mean, I was like, hey, you know, I mentioned this before. I think, because I've talked to so many girls now, right, that for many, many years, I thought, men could only have it from behind. Right. Okay. And I, for many, many years, I didn't know that it was a top, if you're a top bottom exclusive and only some people are both like how some people can write with both hands. Mm -hmm. Only yeah. a handful yeah. are ambidextrous or whatever. Yeah. Right. yeah that can, oh, okay. And that's yeah. only a few. And I yeah. thought, oh, that's such a bummer here. You have the same parts. Shouldn't it be a more of a reciprocal situation? Yeah. You know? And, um, and I think, Gay men and gay men who are writing this movie are annoyed that their dumb straight girlfriends don't understand that you can't have face to face sex even though it's anal. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Right. And when I've said that, everyone's like, so many girls are like, no, they can't. And I go, yeah, they can. Why do you think just it's literally this much yeah. space between the two? But well, you saw it. You no, actually now, showed so you then the they scene. had to show it. Yeah, because they're like, I'm so face sick of these dumb girls. We're oh, going to show you. There's a butthole right there. Boop, boop, yeah, boop, yeah. Get in there. So yeah. show you, and then the next was, let's have a big moment, and then let's also see it, and then with all these innuendos of penetration and impenetrable and control and sphincter, and I'm like, oh my, like, but. I mean, it made it interesting. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, I mean, okay. uh, like whatever. It's all, it's, it's called and sex the, in, in the city. And the, you know? You're right. It's you got to yeah. do it. Well, it's called in just like that. I know, you know but, but I, and then I also feel that they're like, okay, because all these people are, you know, mid fifties pushing sixty. Right. We got to have these young characters, but they have nothing to do. Like the girl who lives downstairs that bought the apartment. Yeah, she's walking around. She literally even even when it's scripted, they 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 she has no one to talk to. Yeah, I know. And then she comes up to Che and she's like, "Wow, I loved your podcast." Well, listen, you can start another one. Yeah, like it's like <laughs> everyone else has one. Shouldn't be so hard. And then she gets a non-binary person to go have sex with at the end of the show. Like right. everyone then ends up, and then finally Miranda gets a more age appropriate lesbian match. Was that what that was? was yes. They're leading up to that. Yes. I actually thoroughly enjoyed the woman with the dirty apartment. That she that she thought was going to be a great thing and that she just has a dirty cuz I've been you we've all been down the road of shitty apartments. Again, it was in friends. I yeah. don't feel like it's that original of a thing, but it's yeah. still good. Yeah, but I enjoyed that. She that. was like, you know, yeah. excited to like really get her feet wet and really run with the lesbian lifestyle. And, and then, then she was getting, like, a dirty cat yeah. box. And yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So now let's get to the juicy part. Aiden. If, okay, this is what needs to happen next season. Okay. Listen up writers who I know listen to my show. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next season starts. Okay. This is what happens. Aiden comes and his son is, you know, got in an accident and right. he goes, my younger son is struggling. He's 14. He had magic mushrooms and stuff in his system. He hitched back because that's what teenagers do is they hitchhike in 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not I got a lift or an Uber right. or whatever. Then got to the dad's house, took his car truck, which he doesn't know how to drive because he's 14. Right. Gets in a car accident and like breaks his leg or whatever. And she's like, it's okay, Aiden. He'll be better. You know, breaks heel. So Aiden comes now, after this whole time of refusing to go in the old apartment because that's where she cheated on him with Big, right? he says, sure, I'll come. After I've missed the meal and everything, he walks right in. Now it's okay that I'm here. Yeah. Okay, after us going to hotels, having to sleep and pretend that we're cousins or something of mm -hmm. Shay Diaz at her Airbnb, fine, we'll come back. And then um, Aiden um, goes, hey, I got to be with my younger son. So I can no longer date you, be with you. There's never a weekend in the future until he turns 20. So I'm going to see you in five years when he's 20. Yeah. Oh, you can't come next week when he's at his mother's? <clears throat> no, he just needs me, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Let's. And they show her having sex like they never did. 
in any of the Sex and City. We see Carrie like see some thigh, really like getting yeah. it. Okay, mm -hmm. and then bye, and he yeah. goes five years. Five years, you're gonna be sixty five years old. Right, like you're just gonna waste those five years. Anyway, what we need to see is we come back next season. Right. And a couple episodes in, we don't really hear about Aiden. She's trying to date other people. And then one of these 29 new characters are like, oh, my son plays soccer or whatever, played against um, whatever Aiden's last name is. And this kid was on it. And she's like, oh, you must be mistaken. Aiden's son is going through physical therapy from breaking his leg last season. And they're like, no, he's the star soccer player. Oh, I like and she this. realizes it was all bullshit. All a lie. And he was like, I'm gonna come back and fuck you and over. And fuck you over. You're gonna fall in love with me. You're gonna sell your apartment. You're gonna buy another house that you don't need. Mm. And then I'm gonna come back and be like, see you in five years, because you fucking did that to me, cheated on me. And wow. Yeah. <clears throat> because That's a I great felt plot it felt line. very fake. Yeah. If but they have not thought about it, you can take it, right? Because it, the whole thing, they felt like they had no chemistry and it felt like he was so acting like he was so into her. Right. And he like sucked her in and then, but it was, yeah. It was, uh, you, once again, it all felt rushed. And I feel yes. like it's so rushed because they have to put nine plot lines in each yes. episode. That they have to rush like Naya, the one. The, the professor has to sleep with the she chef. Had a, yeah, there was a there was the, a weird there was another guy in the bed with her for a while. She told to get out because her ex husband. I think I think Naya's got to go. I just I'm sorry. There's just nothing Some of them interesting gotta go. about that storyline. There's nothing, and I even think the the pretty girl, what's her name? The the pretty um, couple that like you know is rich and has the kids. What's her name? Parker or whatever. Yeah. Nicole Parker. Yeah, boring. So boring. Even when she's like, "Oh, that was my lot. That was my word." Like, you know, she has no connection with anybody. I like the guy, the husband, who, you know, from Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. I like him, but there's nothing to I know. them. Well, it's not. Yeah, I know. I agree. I'll tell you who you lose. What is you lose? Uh, and Mar Mario Cantone. Too much. Mm. Yeah, I, I find he's kind of a bad actor. It's too sticky. Yeah, it's too sticky. And, you know, sometimes I'm watching it and I'm like, this is good. It's getting good. And then I like Mario Cantone. I like him like on t talk shows and stuff. Yeah. But then he comes on. I'm like, oh, he's going to do his bits. And right. here we go. <clears throat> and then. I Next feel season also, let's do all the predictions. So that's going to happen. We're going to find out the kid never broke his leg. That's a good one. Or that he recovered and he's doing great. Right. And why hasn't Aiden come around? Or Aiden's acting like, you know, and was was it like, oh my God, did he really do this just to be like, yeah. And um, then I think that there, and we'll have children and other people in the meantime, Charlotte is going to um, dance with the idea of like dating someone or, right. or have an affair. Either someone's going to come after her or something's going to happen with that older um, guy at the, at the museum or whatever she works oh, at. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So some she's gonna have a little dalliance with cheating because they have okay. such a solid marriage. Miranda's character is so I don't know what we're gonna do with her. Um, yeah, just an, uh, just some lesbian love. Okay, then um, Che I don't think is gonna leave. You think she's still gonna be involved? Think she's like, or is she done? I kind of think she might still be involved, but she should be done. They should get <laughs> like rid of, of Che. The they should just get rid of Che. <clears throat> I kind of feel like. She, like you say on the podcast all the time. I kind of like her. I know. She kind of started to get grow on you. She kind of grows on me. Now I kind of like her storyline because I'm like, how are they going to humiliate comedians right. and podcasters in the scripts? I, I kind of want to see what they want to come up with. And just to, if we don't have to watch her do stand up anymore, it, it would be great. Yeah. We'll just talk about it. We don't have to be in the club anymore because it's painful as a comedian to watch. You know. But what does she do? Does she still just become like. You know, like her whole life is over just because she's a pilot. I mean, the funny thing up. to me was she faded fast. <laughs> like she, like his last season, she couldn't walk down the street. People were going crazy for her. <laughs> two two episodes later, she's working in a pet store. I'm like, I, and then you know. also it's kind of rude when the girl goes, "I'm a huge Shay Diaz fan." Any, um, a huge fan of yours? When is anything else coming up? Any stand up specials or anything? And she goes, "Um, I'll tell you because I'm probably never going to see you again." And yeah. I was like, that's kind of rude. You're at a dinner party of, with 12 people. <laughs> right, right now. She's like, I'm transitioning. And she's like, oh, great. No, I'm transitioning into yeah. whatever, a better a person. or Yeah. 
Yeah. So now I'm going to screw a 20 year old girl that with a shaved head. Yeah, I don't know. Um, they packed it does, all. Does Samantha come back? Well, after I watched that, you know, the little scene, I definitely thought yes. Yeah, I definitely thought yeah. They whatever their beef they have, they're going to work it out, and she's going to come back for at least more time than this. Wh- whether she comes back, if if I was the realtor girl. Mm-hmm. The actress, you'd be like shaking I'm done. in my boots. Yeah, I would be like, find me another role. Mm-hmm. Chances are, I'm not going to be around. Yeah, but I would keep her, and I would have them have a jealousy friendship about Carrie, right? Because they're both much better friends to Carrie than Carrie is to them. Mm-hmm. So let's sh- and now the audience has gone back and realized that Carrie's character is like actually kind of a shitty, selfish friend, right? And um, like even when Carrie was like, I'm sorry, Miranda, Che Diaz and Steve are my friends. Right. So sorry, they're coming to the dinner party and get, you know, and deal with it. But Steve didn't come. Um, no, he didn't come. Yeah. But she did. He go- must have been working oh, on his other show. You know what show. I did just realize? She did know Che first. So Miranda does yeah. have to suck it up. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I kind of like a little bit of that. So I would right. actually like Miranda to stay and the realtor stay. Get rid of Nia. Get rid of... I'm sorry, the Parker girl, Nicole Parker, mm-hmm. and her story. It's just as pretty as she is and as good as her clothes are. It just, it's, there's nothing. Right. And um, yeah, that's what I, that's how it's, that's how it saved the show. And that's Do, what I predict. because there's so much talk of, you know, I feel like they got everything in. If, there, if it was a hot topic in the news, yeah. they got it, whether it be, you know, it's binary, Nava, everybody's yeah. in. Everybody's in. Do season three, do they introduce an alien? <laughs> Because now everybody's talking about them. They're here. Do they? That would be the greatest. <laughs> I got it in the butt. I met the greatest alien yesterday. <laughs> oh, he's tall. He's slick. Haven't you ever had sex with an alien? They have two penises. <laughs> I'll have a Cosmo, please. <laughs> Oh. You can steal that idea too. To- Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Inclusivity when it comes with two penises is my kind of party. I mean, I would watch. Oh, we got to have an alien come. Yeah, alien. And just- and then, yeah, then Charlotte's like, hey, it's, you know, well, you're not coming to lunch. Yeah. Oh, honey, I'm with Beep a Bop. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, well, I mean, Samantha, I was happy that you came back from London, but I mean, you're so uh, involved with your new friends. Honey, you fired me from being your publicist. This alien has a hot book coming (laughs) and the hottest (laughs) podcast. And you know what? It's not just worldwide. It's universal. Get it? Because it's an alien. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Very good. Cannot wait. Cannot wait for it. I'm not going to Brooklyn to watch fucking stand up again. (laughs) I can go on all day with the alien and Sex in the City. And three. then, and then, then Miranda wants to make sure she doesn't offend the alien. Oh, that's right. She's going to stumble over so, herself. So, okay, so you're you're the alien coming along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, girls. Oh. And <laughs> this... oh, I'm so I'm so excited to meet you because um I've been I've been interning at the UN and we're working on um you know. Aliens from different countries, but I know that's offensive now because you're actually in Zamoklikinodanga, and I want to make sure that I call you the right thing that you are. So um, you're doing fine. <laughs> Don't worry about. It. <laughs> I think it's just really fun. It's really great. Um, I want to learn more about your culture. Do you like dates? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, oh my god okay let's move on here um a lot of people really weren't watching it so i hope they enjoyed that segment i know wow yeah i feel like a lot of people stopped watching well i I, my sister stopped watching it's funny because i went to a party a few weeks ago with the girl who runs like max yeah and that's her show right right. she's behind and she was like the ratings are huge like yes. worldwide. So yes. she's like, okay. Because no I problem. asked her, I said, it's going to be a season three. She's like, uh, we will do it until they, they're they dead on the street. I will never stop watching. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Me too. And, um, but I was, you know, my sister Shannon, she stopped watching this season. Mm-hmm. Um, she said, I stopped watching when 
she and her daughter and Miranda couldn't figure out the strap on. Yeah. And she was talking to Carrie like she was putting together an Ikea furniture set mm-hmm. on the speakerphone. Like, yeah. I'm just trying to get the strap on for, oh gosh, you two crazy girl. Like, it was like, yeah. really? You're, you're literally trying on the strap on while you're taking a call from your friend. Anyway, that's when Shannon said, I'm out. Yeah. But what was the funniest thing was me catching her up. And it just sounds, it does sound oh, so ridiculous. I know. When I'm like, and then, you know, Charlotte's daughter wants to have sex, but there's a cyclone and she didn't get condoms. So she's YouTubing how to have her boyfriend pull out. But then Charlotte goes in the cyclone and gets the condoms. And then her daughter is now um, non-binary and goes by they, them and is Rock. But Rock gets a modeling <clears throat> gig. And, yeah. and then, you know, and then Harry wears a wig to oh, like, I mean, like that it was, was just... painful when he was going to be some cool skateboarder guy with the wig on sneaking into the photo shoot. I'm like, like, what is happening? Like, am I supposed to be laughing at this? I think, like, the, I'm... I think what's go- good is that we're never going to stop watching and it's not good. It right. is bad. It is corny. It is trying too hard. But then there's just glimmers. There's just sometimes a moment or there where you're like, that was a really real scene. Right. That was actually really good. Ooh, that was kind of interesting. There's just enough that keeps you going. I thought John Corbett still looked pretty good. I mean, whatever he's doing, he's... I mean, the the jacket was the worst. That, when I don't he looked know like Mike Myers, but was. everything else. Oh, and the other thing is, you ever seen where they set the tone for Charlotte to, I mean, for Carrie to have dementia? Yes. So the I, the you... first season, she was like, "What? Yeah, you want me to have coffee?" But I'm like, "No, she's just in grief." But uh-huh. then they're like, no, there were two other times. They, someone put it together on TikTok. Two other times where like literally her memory is failing her. She's like, I don't remember. I, oh. I said that. And then the, when she goes to meet him, she goes to the wrong restaurant. That's right. But yeah. but I don't think so. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a okay. stretch. Study claims more American men are being hospitalized for having foreign objects stuck inside their rectum. Wow. I just thought this was a good story to do after. Yeah, after the rect- a lot of rectum talk. So anyway, it's true. They say they're saying they're getting an enormous amount of men coming into hospitals all over the world. Right. That have stuffed have put things up their butt. Wow. So anything from little action figures to fruits and vegetables. Really? Is that what it is? Yeah, all action di- figures. Yeah, all different things yeah. they tried. Huh. Um, and I mean, I've always heard the stories, you know. Of course, yeah. so I was in the I was in the emergency right. room when somebody came in and blah blah. But I've never, you know, I, I don't know anybody who's gone through it. I always remember that one of the urban myths was that it was a doorknob. You know how like a doorknob has like a handle like that, like right. a, like a long handle, and a girl got the doorknob stuck inside of her. So then they had to come and take off the door and the doorknob, and she had to go to the hospital. With it like coming out. How did she get the door? Like what? What was she? I guess she, she went on to top of the door to open it. No, like oh. to screw herself. Oh, I don't know if she had no hands or something. She was trying to open the door. <laughs> she had no arms, so yeah. she had to open the door right. with her vagina. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, wow. And then like all those type of stories of how things had fallen. And anyway, I think there's guys are lonely. And, and they just, and they're just doing what they can do. Hey, listen, I'm on the road a lot. I'm or, alone in I'm alone in hotels quite a bit. I never there's never been a point where I looked at little Luke Skywalker doll and go, oh, you know what? I'm gonna shove that right up my. <laughs> then they said that this couple were try. They were in China and they were trying to have sex for four. I mean, they were having sex for four years mm-hmm. and they couldn't get pregnant. And their their family was sad and everything, so they went to the doctor and they're like, "What is the issue?" So he checks her out, and she's a virgin, and they were having anal sex the whole time. Yeah, which you cannot get pregnant that way. Of course not. And yeah. so then they told her what to do and told him what to do. Yeah. And now they have a child, but I'm like, I I I I, I mean, both these stories. I'm like, okay, first of all. I think COVID really fucked people up. I think uh-huh. people need to go out. Right. I think they need to hang out with other humans in person. Right. I agree. And have sex. Yes. And even video games, it used to be that you someone would play next to you. Right. Now you don't. You play while they are in their other home. Mm-hmm. So even these like guys yeah. aren't even meeting people in person to play the game. 
I've been saying this on my podcast and beyond for a long time. We killed hookup culture. We killed it with slut shaming and whatever else. You know, I think we killed the fun time. We've talked about it many yes. times. The fun days of getting ready, having the cute top or whatever, hitting the town, yeah. looking to hook up. It's gone. Completely well, gone. I, I went out on Sunday night to a hot club that I talked about on, on the show the other what day. What club? What, Melrose Place, it's called. And it's really on Melrose Place. And it was a rooftop situation. Oh, boy. And DJ and no, people were flirting. People oh, is that were right? flirting and hooking up. Oh, I'm up. so happy to hear that. And then, um, yeah. Like good looking people getting like getting up on each other? You know, I don't, a mix of people. Okay. I'm not into the look. Like yeah. I have, I like a traditional look, uh -huh. but I like that it was a fun mix of people. All right. I don't know who I would have chosen. This one guy that when I was coming down, because I'd come down the stairs, right, and he was like young and some type of accent. He was a hundred percent hitting on me. Is that right? Yes. Wow. How'd that feel? A lot. Did you feel alive again? I just felt like this guy obviously is looking for a sugar mama. And, you know, and I had a blazer with like a feathered cuff. Okay. And I, I think that that'll screams. That'll do it. That's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'll do it. All right. But I was like, no, I'm leaving. And he's like, wait, I want to talk to you. And yeah, I was like, no, but that's uh, what's out there. Um, speaking of crazy outfits. Okay. So Kanye and his wife, I don't understand what this is all about. She has right. to wear nylons with hideous white pumps and then she has to wear tan nylons wrapped on her head. She yeah. has to wear this outfit. And he's not allowed to wear shoes. And they're going through Europe. And here she is again. Oh. They say that she's going to you know, get arrested for her indecent exposure where she's just wearing a whole nylon suit. And I really don't know what the goal is. And then he was on, you know, like in Venice or whatever, one of those little taxi boats. Yeah. And he had his full ass out. Why was his full asset? Because he's. I think it was on. I think or? it was on purpose. Oh, I don't know. What do you think is going on here? I mean, I, this is just. Isn't it just so people take pictures of them? Right. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the whole thing. This guy's like lost his mind, right? Or is it all just a ruse to get people to take pictures of him? I guess, but I don't see this like working out well for either one I of know, them. Nobody's yeah. like going. You know what? I want to start wearing nylons all yeah. around and no shoes and i don't right. like it's not work like i don't know what it's doing it's not is she an actual they, have they been married are they married people or say a... like wife so i don't know yeah. if she's actually his wife right but this is not gonna last i don't think this is built on a solid foundation i'm just I mean, gonna he used guess. to make i mean even kim who came from a you know a great family has a lot of support right had her own business she was convinced to wear big, long ski jackets in July. Right. Because he told her to. Yeah. And she couldn't have any color in her house. When North was born, North could never wear pink. Yeah. So there's something about whoever he gets as a girlfriend, he somehow convinces them to be dressed weird and right. do whatever he wants. And yeah. it's just whatever new idea he has. So right now it's like, oh, this looks great nylons on your whole body with your nips and your vag hanging out mm -hmm. and then just a white pump with a weird heel. When I where does he meet these girls? Is it this I feel like they're set up like by like worked publicist. for his company or yeah. something and yeah, I don't know, I just thought it was strange. Because they all kind of resemble her, of course, right? Yes. They all resemble Kim, which yeah. just seems to be the thing. Kind of, yeah, yeah, curvy and a pretty face. Yeah. Um Jonathan Chabon, yeah. food food god. <laughs> the food god, sure. Yeah. Okay. He's still here. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've read so the story. So in 2020, mm -hmm. he loved this Korean barbecue sauce. He would talk about it on, you know, he'd always talk about food. Mm -hmm. And he said he pulled it out of the fridge to put on, and it it cracked in his hand, and he has a, a big scar on his hand. Yeah. And he's suing for $20 million. Right. Saying, because of that cut, my hand never repaired, mm -hmm. and I can't do my social media posts the way I normally do. Uh huh. Because of this, because of handicap. Yeah. And so he's suing the the barbecue sauce, the distribution center, the store that sold it, everybody. Glass suing, just just suing. He's like suing broken glass. Yeah. You know, like that's the way. When something breaks, you got to steer clear. I mean, there. How can we prove that the yeah. that the bottle 
broke in his hand unless there were like 700 other people that had right. that happen. Yeah. This... What do you think the goal, why do you think he's doing this? Do you think he's desperate for money? Is he doing it for PR? What's he doing it for? Well, I mean, everybody's writing underneath, desperate for money. You know, I see the comments, but I don't know his situation. Does he make money talking about French toast? I mean, I don't know who makes money anymore. Everybody yes. I see has five Ferraris in their driveway. <laughs> Everybody. Like, every, uh, like, there's comedians. You ever go to the comedy store lately? The parking lot of the comedy store looks like, uh, I mean, it looks like a cribs. There's Ferraris. Really? It's crazy. G-Wagons. And these are like comedians who are, are, you know, coming up with us. Everybody. I don't know. Everybody's making $50 million. Or that's what they want to spend their money on. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But so I don't know what his, like, does that, does he make money? I guess he does. He hangs out with. I think he is a PR person. That's what here he got his start. So I think this is. I'm going to do it. I'm going to see if they settle. My hand is fucked up. I do, I, the, the thing did really break in my hand, whatever. Right. And it never really repaired. And I think it's a bit of a PR thing. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. To just get people to remember him again. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. I mean, it's all... I feel like this whole li- living in that world where you just kind of con- kind of constantly figure something out, how to get yourself back relevant. In that you got to either wear nylons <laughs> or sue a Korean barbecue sauce yeah. company. I feel like that's it's a like lot exhausting. of work. Like, like yeah. I know, or start a fight with somebody. Like God, yeah. if you only had like a solid skill set. I know. This is why I tell everybody go be an electrician. They're literally. I saw a commercial for South uh, Dakota, the yes. state of South Dakota, a commercial for the state. They were like, we don't have enough people. Please come to South Dakota because we need electricians. We're building and we have nobody to build. Come to South Dakota. Oh, that's good. This guy should be doing electrical work in South Dakota. Right. Maybe his hand won't be up, but that's what I'm saying. Kim posted this photo of her looking really thin in these jeans that she let her kids draw on. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I just love my baby for Mother's Day this year. They gave me these jeans, but she's like in her jet. Taking a photo of herself. So a lot of people were like, oh, my God, Kim, it's not Mother's Day, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm like, of course, it it's exactly what everyone thinks. Of course, she was actually wearing the jeans, right. saw how good she looked, and then was like, I'm going to post this, but I'm also going to, you know, I do right. love that my kids scribbled on them, whatever. And I just feel like nobody's talking about them I mean, really she anymore. does look better than ever. I, uh, yeah. Because the ass has gone yeah, down and right. she's remained skinny. And but she got bangs. Did you see the bangs? No, They're coming right here. Oh no! Oh no! I don't like that. No, I mean just, just for that. All, no. So this is they were hanging out. Uh, Chris and Kim were with um, Meghan Markle's mother. Right. And the reason this is important is because I have said that they should be hanging out and she, she they should be getting tips. Meghan Markle and I, her mother right. maybe. On what to do with Meghan Markle's career next. Right. So they are now friends. They're all friends hanging out. It was a charity gala in New York called This Is About Humanity. And um, they were just spotting. They were hanging out with uh, Doria, the mother. And, you know, but who knows? So they this is just about what they wore. And then, you know, Kim had her, her baby bangs, which people are like, mm. Anyway. What do you think? I mean, I, I don't like the I don't like the bangs, but that's just a is that are those clip ons or something? Or does that no, come I think off? it's a real bangs. But this said, as for Merkel, she has been in talks with some big name directors and producers for a potential TV comeback, according to a new report. Now, I think she actually might start acting again. Why not? Because the suits have become popular again yeah, on Netflix. Of, yeah, and I really think there is just not enough reality stuff that right. she can do now with the podcast being gone and who knows what how many more things they can do with yeah. Netflix. They've already told their story. I and know. Uh, he got new hair, though. He got like I'm a whole new this. hairdo. Yeah. So that's good. It's thicker. But I think she, I think, I definitely think there's trouble in paradise. Yeah. And I don't know, like she gets, if she gets on a show and starts Creating her own thing where people are like, hey, I don't really like what she did with the Royals, but actually I love this show and she's actually a really good actress in it. That's where she can then start 
like reinventing herself and and having people respect her for the yeah. for the craft. She better be whatever she chooses to be and better be great though cuz it's yeah. going to be so picked apart that she's got Or be. do you think people wouldn't want to have her in it cuz she's got so much stink on her? Well, I mean somebody'll take her cuz it'll get, you know, people will go see it. Yeah. I think, I don't know, you know, who knows. Anyway, this was funny. Yeah, well, I saw it. So Adele is performing in at Caesars, and yeah. there is this guy who is very close to the stage, and he's standing up and he is singing, and he he filmed it. He filmed himself getting all excited, and you know, just loving every moment. And this woman comes up and is like, "Hey, can you sit down? Like we're not being able to enjoy it." Right. And then a security guard comes, and he goes right back to singing. He's like, you know, rolling in the deep, like just yeah. And, um, He's and standing up. He's singing loud. He's he was going wild. But then Adele was like, "Hey, leave him alone. He's allowed to do that." Right. Um, yeah. I feel like she loves to stop in her singing and talk to the audience. Like she really, Everybody. honestly, would rather be a stand up yeah. than, than sing. I know. I keep seeing her like going out into the audience and what's going on in Vegas where everybody's stopping shows because people are taking pay. Like just finish the show. <laughs> They should see the shit we have to go through at a comedy club. I mean, they- I feel like they want it. Yeah. They want the interaction. I know. It's wild. And, um, but then he, he made a statement like, no, they can all stand up and da 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 Look, I mean, I would think Adele would be one of those pretty chill kind of- like the, He's acting like he's at Taylor Swift. Right. When you go to Taylor Swift, you know it's going to be- It's going to be standing Two hours from, of screaming. Yeah. And everyone's going to be standing and you're going because you have a 12-year-old daughter. Right. right? But I would think you're going to Adele, like it should be Some, kind of a more chill experience. So it yeah. is that is pretty annoying. Yeah, I mean, I guess who knows? I feel like concerts you stand the whole time, don't you? I mean, certain ones. Um. Yeah, but then also, if it's a, I don't know. I just went. I went by myself. I like to go by myself yeah. to the concerts. All right. Where'd you go? I went to see Culture Club. And Berlin. I tumble for you. Mm, that's right. So two different nights are they were together. No, they're together. And so Culture Club's 80s first. Eighties extravaganza. No, did, Berlin first. Culture Club second. Did you see um, Dorit and PK? No, actually, he PK. mentioned PK from the stage. Oh, really? He said, "This is my manager PK's favorite song," and he sang it. So he did mention him. So Boy George. Boy George was performing at the Hollywood. Bull, mm -hmm. mind you, and he said, PK is my manager, and I absolutely, little Phoenix and Jagger were so sad to miss it. So, um, so it was good, yeah. Oh my god, but I go by myself, you know, because I, my wife's like, I don't, you know, yeah, that like, can, but every song was a hit. Did he do every anything do new? all the hits and do a lot of covers? They do, you know, good, they, but he didn't do any like new songs. No, they don't bore you with that, they give you the hits and get out of there, okay. But I was alone, and I ha was a little concerned because I. In Hollywood Bowl, they have boxes. You can yeah. get a box, and it's four seats in a box. We sat in one for yes. Duran Duran, and they're they're uh, they're close proximity. So I bought one ticket on StubHub, and I'm like, oh, am I going to be with people real close? Yeah. Sure enough, I get there, and it's just me in the box, and it's quite apparent that I'm sitting by myself <laughs> because I'm you could so... see it, like the entire oh, Hollywood Bowl could see that there's only one person in this box. By the way, that could be an episode of Seinfeld. Like, this yeah. feels like a sitcom that you would go to take it by yourself. Right. And then you're with four, three people, and they're all sharing food, and then you're, you're like, actually well, kind of hungry, and they're just going to start to share with you, yeah. or you're going to be like, well, let me share some food with you. Yeah. Oh, I and love I'm, the Hollywood I'm, Bowl. Yeah, it's the best place to see a concert. Okay. Um, what do we? How do you think, we haven't talked about since the big break has happened, with Britney Spears and um, Sam, the latest report is he is unemployed. He's looking for his new... Well, of course he's unemployed. Yeah. He's an actor. We're on strike. Right. He's been with her for seven years. Mm -hmm. Is he expected to be working at Starbucks? Like, he yeah. just separated from his right. multi-million dollar wife. Like, I just want to say to everybody who attacked both you and I for this story, the apologies, I hope they're coming soon because... <sighs> They're Everybody said we were being insensitive about it when I said that maybe we're a little too soon on on lifting uh, every – you know, now they're saying – I've read, and maybe it's true or not yeah. true, I'm not sure – that she's looking to reconcile with the father. She wants the father back in her life. And uh, so if there's any truth to that, if the father now comes back in 
which is what I've been saying since the beginning. I said I think the father was there. And then they have a sitcom called Father's no- Father Knows Best. Bring it on. Bring it on. What were you going to say? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I, I believe that that was, you know, from the beginning, I think that all the people dancing on the courthouse steps and stuff was a little, I, I think it was a little much premature for what was going well, on. Well, um, Britney Spears also cracked her head open and needed stitches after a fight, according to TMZ. So according to their show called Divorce and Despair on TMZ, Britney cracked her head during a heated argument with her now ex-husband, Sam, in London, and that she required medical attention for her injuries. However, a source denies the incident, saying that the couple has never been to London together. You would think you would be able to figure that out. Right. Yeah. Anyway, she cracked her head open, and um, she and Sam were going at it in a hotel room, and it got so bad that she tripped and hit the coffee table, cracking her head open. And needed stitches. By the way, today um, I got a lot of people being mean to me under my Instagram about my head f- about falling on my head again. I don't know why they. It's keep- back again. All of a sudden, they just come. They just come all really? of a sudden, like twelve of them today. About if oh, uh, like, maybe did you get that shot again? There's yeah. new vaccines out or something. Yeah, you're gonna they- get that other shot. Yeah, you know, you're talking about Jesus again, right? You know, like all this stuff. Uh-huh. And um, I'm just like, oh god. And then they're like, you know, have you fallen again? You're the. F- I usually don't find female comedians funny, but it was funny when you fall, fall and you cracked your head. I'm like, oh, you're nice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> anyway, are- um, then she also added two employees to her house staff. One with a medical background. Now, you heard that she, that the person that she allegedly was cheating with Uh was her male housekeeper. Oh, I did not hear that. Yes. Oh, wow. And he had a record. Like a record, like a, not a a singing record. Like a, (laughs) (laughs) like he's not a, uh, you know what, yeah. Yes. Like a a criminal record. Anyway, um, oh, the two... Wait, the two staff, one has, it, that she got, one has a medical background. Oh, good. So, um, yeah, so we'll see. Well, you know, you wish her the best. You really do. I don't think anybody, I mean, I don't feel this is, is going to end well. You know, it's just a sad I, story all around. And, do you, you know, I, I like, I mean, everyone likes Britney Spears, you know? I don't think anyone wants anything bad to happen to do them. Do you remember whatever happened, no, no, sorry, not whatever, Sunset Boulevard. The, the movie? movie? Sunset Boulevard. Yes. Gloria so Swanson. a juicy scooper said, because I said Kyle and Kim Richards remind me of whatever happened to Baby Jane. They're like, this is a modern day um, Sunset Boulevard about an yeah. old actress that still thinks she's a star and everyone around her that works for her makes her believe that she still is. Right. And I kind of feel it's a version of this. Like she's so out of it that she thinks that she's dancing for like the people in right. Vegas. Yeah. And I mean that but it be. but it's being replaced with an Instagram. Yeah. And that she does it all the time and like honestly she is like you know they want to see and you know and right. she does the same dance over and over again and yeah. It's why is that her house? And where is she living now? How come we can't get I think she's like nailed. still in like Calabasas or Thousand yeah. Oaks or something. Okay. Yeah. You I know, don't know. I just don't know the day to day over there. You know, I don't know. You never see her out. You know, you never see her at she 7 She never has any girlfriends or, yeah, or anything. I know. Well, it's she went out tough. for chicken. Oh, she did? Yeah. Where'd she go for chicken? She went to um, some chicken hot wings place and then oh. got with a bunch of gay guys and then they did, oh, a, I saw then the, they did a photo shoot yeah, and whatever. I saw the, with the gay guys, yeah. But um, all right, this is pretty juicy. This guy, he's on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And his name, it's, um, I guess his name is, oh, for citizenship, I guess that would be his name, right? Or this would be Patty. What is the name of this person? I don't, I have no idea. I don't know how any of that works. I think Patty is the name. Anyway, he does conspiracy theories on okay. TikTok. So. There's uh, not enough of people doing conspiracy theories on TikTok. I think we need more. <laughs> this one just doesn't hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just kind of interesting. Yeah. The, the people that are, you know, obsessed with Justin Bieber and <clears throat> Haley Bieber. Right. They believe that they will, that he will announce or they will, they will be getting divorced soon. Okay. I hope they don't. Because it'll be five years that they've been married come September something. Right. And after that, 
he could be divorced and he will not be deported or anything. Oh, because he's they, Canadian. And they believe that he, because he was with Selena Gomez and then they broke up and then he got with Haley right away mm-hmm. and married her right away because he had been arrested for something. Yeah. And he, if he wasn't going to be married, he was going to be deported. Oh. And Haley, I mean, you know, Justin Bieber or not, had he, if he could not be in America, that would really, really be detrimental yeah. to like his career and his life and everything. Right. So he married her. And I'm not saying he didn't love with her at the time, but it will be very interesting if something happens. And that's just a conspiracy theory. That's interesting. I mean, I could see that. A lot of people do that, you know. Um, I mean, so that was a good one. That is a good one. I mean, she's gotten all she could get out of that. I mean, she's a big star now yeah. from that marriage. So good for her. What do you think about, um, we haven't talked about Sofia Vergara and Joe Manganiello. I getting, think it's just, getting divorced. You know, yeah. It's a sad situation. And then he got a big tattoo. Right. Of what does it say? What does this tattoo say? I got to find that one. Oh, Oh, here it is. His tattoo um, pays tribute to his American heritage. heritage. The tattoo comes amid the ongoing, um, I don't know. Oh, Armenian, not American. I was, I I wasn't reading it right. And I was like, my God, wouldn't that be, that would almost be seen as like, (laughs) like, Like if you were like I, I want to you know have my American heritage. People would be like oh. you, white supremacist. Yeah. Anyway, Armenian. It's um, it's something that deals with it's angel in Armenian. Okay. Meanwhile, got he's it. got his pup Bubbles. Yeah. And I have said that the dog was a major factor in breaking the toilet. You think up. so? Oh, I know so. Yeah. The little dog that Chihuahua hated her, mm-hmm. and. Nipped at her, bit her, everything. She huh. talked about it in talk shows. Really? And want, and she bought the dog and the dog didn't like her. Right. And he, it never occurred to him to be like, you know, maybe we find it another home or something. Yeah. This isn't cool that the dog hates you. No. He just continued to have that dog around him all the time. And the dog in every photo was just looking away from her and hating her. Well, she also got Joe Manganiello at this height. He was, you know, he was on, uh, you know, Magic Mike and he was doing really well. And he was, and then of course that all kind of slowed down a bit and fam- Modern Family ended. She's still doing great. But I mean, I think they were spending more time together after Modern Family ended and his, he had a lot on time I on think his hands. like a Meghan Markle, yeah. like and now, after all the hoopla ends, you kind of look over and you're like, Right. I'm not that into you. You're not that great. And right. I think I could do better. Mm-hmm. And I think she she came, from what I've read, she came from a lot of money from Colombia. She's yeah. not like some... So she has like some princess standards. Okay. And he's very down to earth guy. Yeah. And, you know, one of the stories was that, you know... Um, oh, that someone told me that he... She was mad that he mowed their lawn. Oh, she was like, that's not what you do. You hire someone to do that. That's embarrassing. Huh. And he was like, I just want to do it. I like yeah. doing it. So I think that they, yeah. And I think not having kids, there's the, it's there's less to fight for. She has a kid from a previous relationship. Like 30, yeah, right, you know? right. And so I just, uh, I think it's like. Now, is, is is she still a judge on America's Got Talent? I mean, I, I think so. Yeah, I think she's on there. Yeah. Um, there's this wolf man. A naked wolf banner, you spotted by hikers in the German mountains, and he wouldn't take his eyes off of us. Okay. But the comments are so funny in this article from the New York Post. Yeah. It's like, um, <laughs> just go down Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, absolutely. As soon as I saw this picture, I'm like, this could be any 7-Eleven on Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> and then they're like, oh yeah. my God, just let him leave, live alone. Like, let him just yeah. be on the grid. Who cares, you know? Right. Um, but- they said he was scary in the woods. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that you don't really watch Sister Wives. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. But, I mean, I just want to say a general thing. Okay. I believe that these people are the poorest reality shows, reality people that have ever been on a reality show. Why is that? Okay, so this girl, Robin, she was wife number four. Okay. And she joined Cody when the show was already happening. Yeah. Um, but or maybe they were on for two seasons. And she was divorced and had three kids. And she was just like, this is what I want. You know, she never says I want to be on TV. But 
I think, okay, I'll, it can be on TV and then I don't have to, you know, be the only one to screw them or be with them. I like right. having sister wives. I like this idea. My kids really, you know, will love to have all these other kids around. And then in the end, he really only started spending time with Robin and then the other wives were feeling neglected and jealous and now they've all left him. Uh, so uh, they're all gone? He doesn't have any wives? He only has Robin, yeah. who's crying the hardest because now she's stuck with him and he's yeah. like such a dick. And Christine left first. Janelle is ready to leave this one right here. Uh -huh. And then Mary is the first one and she never wants to leave, but he's like, why are you still here? Like he is like, so, um, and now he's, and now he's pissed because the two wife, number two and three, Christine and Janelle, they love each other. They're like, yeah. let's hang out with all the kids together. And then Robin who brought him <clears throat> her three kids in and then had two more with him. She's like, well, my kids feel left out. But meanwhile, there's something real creepy that happened. What? I mean, outside of the entire show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> he has all these kids, like 18 kids. Okay. With her three. And he made Mary, who was only the legal wife, wife number one, divorce him so that he could marry Robin so he could adopt those three kids. Then they had two more. Okay. And we never get to see the inside of Robin's house. And the rumor is because she is a hoarder. Oh, now that's the show I'd like to see. Yeah. And th there was a photo of him. I mean, a, 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 someone screen grabbed it of him, like, you know, talking t into his phone or whatever that yeah. they used. And it's like the decor is so ugly. And it's like, people are like, why does she have all these frame photos? I'm like, oh, because she's a hoarder and she keeps buying stuff and like everything. Yeah. So she's crying because um, she's like, well, they don't want to. You know, the two girls with all their kids don't want to hang out because Mary only has one child. Okay. And um, they fe they're they feeling rejected. But one thing that I've said that now people are picking up, since one of his daughters, okay. who is technically a stepdaughter, mm -hmm. is no relation, he seems very enamored with. Oh, no. And... So he takes her to get her ears pierced. And uh -huh. it's like, the show is so boring, but I cannot stop watching. Right. So he's like, oh, you know, with our religion, we're not supposed to get our ears pierced or whatever. And she's like, so, and he goes, I just think it's kind of a cool thing, you know, that I'm going to take my daughter to get her ears pierced. It's a daddy daughter thing. Meanwhile, he had another, he had a daughter with this other wife who was getting like a very intense back surgery okay. for her scoliosis. And he didn't go to, to the operation or the hospital or anything, but he's going to go with this girl and they slow it down where he like touches her back. Uh huh. And then, oh, when they come back, he checks out her ass and licks his lips. And they're showing this on TV that well, are they leading you to believe that it's going to be? No, they're doing it very, they're just yeah. doing it subtly, but a fan has like oh. brought it up. Wow. And I don't think like this girl wants to be. But like that happens a lot, like in, yeah. the, in the more in the in the um, polygamous thing that right. like, okay, if I want another wife, could it be my daughter? But I don't think there's any way Robin would put up with it. But that would keep the show mm. going for another ten years. But literally, right? They've been on a show for seventeen years, and none of the women have very much to show for it. They yeah. live in very humble things. One hat was on a tra was living in a trailer for a year. Now she's got a tiny apartment with a tiny Christmas tree. Yeah. And even Robin, who owns her house, it's nothing great to look at. That's why Bethany Frankel wants a union for these people. <laughs> they need to be protected. Right? Isn't she starting some But I'm just kind of looking at the Robin thing. I'm like, what did you gain from this? Now you don't have any family. You're stuck with him. And you really don't have any money after being on the show for like 15 years. Yeah. And. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand. What they, honestly, they must have the worst attorney because I cannot believe that they don't live a better life. These women. Yeah. I would die to have any one of these women on my show. I, what? I'm going to see. Oh, they would definitely come on here. I don't know. I think they, I don't. Get the I hoarder feel like lady. They, I feel like they don't do any. Um, yeah, you don't see them out doing press. They're not really doing the. I think they really follow the rules. They're of living the, TLC. the Mormon lifestyle. They, yeah. They're really like the most well behaved, right. like reality show people do whatever they say. They want them to film by themselves during COVID. They want them to show up at the same Mexican restaurant and have the same conversation over and over again. Yeah. They will do it, right. you know, 
whatever it is. Yeah. And well, I'm just like, it's got, I just have to know how much they make. Um, do you know that Julia Fox's book is coming out? I mean, yeah, I have somebody, I saw somebody post something about it. I, there's nothing I could care about less than this. I, I feel like she's kind of twizzled. Oh, like, I mean, has you she You know, ever? and also the Anna, um, the other one that's like, you're so poor. The one oh, that, that yeah. did, like, she's yeah. disappeared. Right. You don't see her anymore. I don't hear you about know her. who else has gone to? I, um, what was her name? Is, Anna? I don't know. The, anyway, the one yeah. Who, the, the, the couple from Good Morning America. You don't see them. Roback. No, Amy Roback. Come on. And, wait. Hold on. They're here. Hold on. Hold are on. They, they got an Amy Roback? Oh, there yeah. they are. But not a lot of scoop. No. Just that they are now, this Amy Robach and TJ Holmes are making things Instagram official. The controversial couple shared the same photo to their respective accounts oh. and turned their comments off. Oh, okay. So they're just still dating. Yeah. I know they don't want to, but the only choice they have is to become podcasters or realtors. Or crack a bottle of sriracha in your hand and sue the company. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get back in the fold. Yeah. I mean. They're either studying know. for their real estate exam, and that's why they haven't started their podcast, right. or they are getting ready to launch the podcast. I'm sure it's coming any day now. Yeah. It's, I can't believe it hasn't happened yet. Just what we needed. I know. It's a little late now. Um, but anyway, getting back to her book, this is what they say it's about. This is the description. This commitment to authenticity has never been more on display than in Down the Drain with writing that is both eloquent and accessible. Julia Fox recounts her turbulent path to cultural supremacy. Such a weird... Yeah. Her parents' volatile relationship that divided her childhood between Italy and New York and left her largely raising herself, a possessive and abusive drug-dealing boyfriend whose torment conti continued even from within Rikers Island... Her own trips to jail, as well as her psychotic psych psychiatric hospital, her work as a dominatrix that led to a complicated entanglement with a sugar daddy, a heroin habit that led to New Orleans trap houses, that, and that she wow. would kick only after the fatal overdose of her best friend, her own near lethal overdoses, and the death of still more friends from drug Oh, it's going on? Yeah, from oh. drug and suicide and emotionally explosive tabloid dominating romance with a figure she dubs as the artist. Kanye. Okay. A whirlwind short-lived marriage with her trials as a single parent striving to support her young son. Yet, as extraordinary as her story is, it's a univer her, her universal, why did I say that? Universal tility? Universality. Universality is what makes it so powerful. Yeah. Well, you First just of all, why to... couldn't she have been in the Kairos uh, retreat group? Oh, now, yeah. That's, that's the a kind of person story. that you She's want to tell the stories. story yeah. at the Catholic retreat, mm -hmm. three day retreat. Um, I don't like the uh, the the blonde eyebrows. Uh, she looks like Madonna. This looks yeah. like very much Madonna's book. Remember when Madonna had the book, the sex book? Yeah. And she talked about having sex with a Puerto Rican boy. She did in the book. Didn't she take a? Didn't but she? I mean, she could probably have said that was a fictional or didn't something. Didn't she shit on a table or something? And people they they photographed her from underneath like a glass table. If, am I making this up? No, or was that I a always real talk thing? about that, but I don't think that was her thing. She did like photos of her like being naked, hitchhiking. It was a I sex swear book. there was poop on a glass table. I swear in that, that book. Was. Yes, I. It, you definitely cannot buy it anymore. You, the only way you could get it is like on an eBay situation. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was a, a big lot of book deal. people that do books that are like. Oh my God! I will be canceled if this is out. Mm -hmm. the, there is no way to get those books. Yeah, one being um, House of Hilton. Okay, it's a very hard book to get that I have. Right, it's about the um, the you know Hilt all the Hiltons. Yeah, the a Drew Barrymore book about her childhood. Oh yeah, she does not want that out. Okay, and then this and the sex book of Madonna. Really, which she talks about having sex with a Puerto Rican boy or something. Okay, but yeah. like I said, that could be fictional. It doesn't mean it's autobiographical. Yeah, autobiography. But um, well, I mean, I think she's got some juicy stories to tell. I'm sure, but I but mean, I don't know. I don't know if I like her personality. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be rooting for her or care. Yeah, you I know. Do. So I'll have somebody else do the review of it. Um, North Hollywood strippers return to work 
at only uni- um, unionized yes. club in yeah. the U.S. I'm familiar with it. It's called, uh, yeah. I've what is there. it? Tell me about it. Um, it's a North Hollywood club. Yeah, it's on Lancashire. Yeah. It reopened after a lengthy shutdown. The club strippers walked off the job nearly a year and a half ago. They're returning to work as members of the Actors' Equity Association Labor Union, becoming the nation's only strippers with union representation. Good. Did Bethany do this? <laughs> she might have gotten that, yeah. She'll take credit for it. Workers from other labor unions also joined the club strippers to show support. They Star say that, Gardens, that's the name of the place. Oh, they say their concerns about issues including abusive treatment by patrons and safety. Well, I think those super high heels and spinning around on a pole is a safety hazard. It is. And if you're really going to do about safety. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they come... And they come out hard when their first song begins. You know, some some eighty, some white snake song starts cranking, and, and they come slithering out, around and, then and slipping around. Yeah, I was um, walking out in some platform hills recently, and uh-huh. I took a tumble. You did? Yeah. Where? Going where? I was leaving the show that I did with Sheena Shea. I was like going, you know, and uh-huh. then I was like whatever, like a pothole. Yeah. Somehow I missed the dirt. I couldn't even believe it. I totally fell. Oh, no. And, um, but I was okay. Good. But I did pee a little. While falling? Just a little trickle. Yeah. Well. Because it was like so scary. Okay. Yeah, sure. That it was just like a tiny bit of pee. Yeah. But I still continued to go to the next location. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Don't let anything stop you from getting to the next good time. Um, um anyway. So well, good for them. Good for them. Um, Drea DiMatteo from The Sopranos. She mm-hmm. has an OnlyFans plans account. But is she just doing like telling stories about the no? Sopranos it's dro- it's jaw dropping. Yeah, I'm so sure. she's just doing beautiful photos. Why not? What are you gonna do? I mean, she's been she's done some work. She's been out there. I mean, if you're Who's pretty working? and you, if you're pretty, yeah, I say go do the OnlyFans thing because this podcasting thing is harder than you think. No kidding. And I th- yeah, I think people are starting to realize that it's a lot more work than But I think people like Dre or De Mateo are burnt they they're they're ruining the only fans for like the regular girl. Yeah, a lot of people say people that. People are gonna go to hers, pay whatever, forty dollars a month. Because they're like, Oh my god, they're I, like, Oh, that's that's a ripoff. She's just but cook- I, yeah. But then she's gonna have to really work it. Like I think you get the initial boost, just like right. when a new podcast starts they are mm-hmm. number three because everyone subscribed that week right you know but are is everyone to keep listening is everyone to keep going to her after they've kind of seen the photos and stuff she would have to really engage them and talk to them and make them feel like they're special and then probably she should tell soprano stories yeah in lingerie with oh. beautiful lighting okay um and charge a lot for that well, there's already, I think the two of the Soprano kids, the kids have a podcast. Uh, well, the only two that there were, right? Yeah. Tony's kids. Yeah, Tony's kids. And where they rewatch the episodes. I don't know if they re- Well, I, they I actually, should. Yeah. I think they actually just do like a podcast where they just talk about life. It's well, on. they shouldn't do that. Yeah. They should go, let's watch it with us, watch it one every week, and right. then we'll recap it. Okay. You know what's kind of sad is that April Richardson was totally the person that invented that. Yeah, she did it with she, Saved by the a- Bell. April was um, a comic and a writer's She's assistant. She's back doing Chelsea. it again, by the way. She's back Okay, doing it. and if you like Saved by the Bell, look her up. Because yeah. she was doing this like 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'll do your podcast. She goes, well, we just watched an episode of Saved by the Bell. And then we like talk about it. Yeah. With other com- And she was like the first one to do that. Yeah, I know. She must be pissed that everyone copied her idea. Um. Anyway, the daycare workers who terrorize the children wearing the um the the mask from Scream, they yeah. they finally got punished. I saw that. So weird. You know what I also want to say I, that things have bothered me. There's a trend that was happening. Okay. A couple trends. One was you take your your like your baby's sitting there in a high chair, and I've seen this at daycares too, and they just take a piece of like ham and throw it at them, I've seen and that. then it sticks to their yeah. face. And there, some of them are like okay with it, and others are like confused yeah and then people are like obviously that's awful but then there's the egg cracking one where you take your kid and you're like hey want to cook together and you're like yeah mom we're gonna make a cake yeah we are 
So we're going to crack the egg, and then they act like they're going to crack it on a bowl, and they crack it on the kid's head. What? And they film it and post it. Really? And sometimes the kid is like, what? And crying. Nice. And people are like, this is so awful. First of all, this is kid is going to ha- is going to be traumatized. Yeah. They're not going to trust you. No. And they also th- were so excited to cook with you. Like, it's so mean. Mm-hmm. And then this one woman did it. Where she's like, let's, you know, and then she was about to crack it, and then she cracked it on her own head. Yeah. And the kid was still a little freaked out, but at least people were like, well, at least that's a nicer mother. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, people, I mean, I don't. The do, pranking your kids. It's just Do worse. you remember when um, the Jimmy Kimmel, we ate all yeah, the, candy, the candy, and everyone thought that was great until someone pointed out, like, it's not great. I remember watching the first one. I'm like, I feel like that's a cruel thing to do. To, and, and to yeah. trick them and make them think that. And yeah, because I mean. I went to Home Depot with my daughter last yeah. night. We had a bit of a sink issue. Okay. Clogged. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, you know, listen, I'm not going to do a commercial here, but let me just say Drano yeah. works. <laughs> you ever use Drano? Oh my yeah. God. It works. Yes. Peter has had to do the Drano because, you know, I have a lot of hair. I have a lot yeah. of fake eyelashes that go down It the went drain. right. Anyway, le- enough, enough about Drano. Okay. Took my daughter at 730 last night to Home Depot. Fun. And they got a lot of um, Halloween decorations Already. out. Big, okay. giant, scary things. And you could press a button and they'll all, you know, yeah. that's, but the kids get to press the button. And my daughter was kind of scared by some of them. Yeah. And I, I don't know, maybe I was a little like these people because I was like, well, there's other little kids doing it. They're not that scary. Just pretend. But she's like, I'm scared by it. And I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> it's not that scary. But anyway, we, now she wants to buy the the fifty, the 25-foot skeleton that everyone's buying. It's a hot seller at Home Depot. Twenty five. Oh, you're going to get it. Two, nine, 200, 300 bucks. Why wouldn't I? You should get it. But I have such large hedges and I live behind such big gates that I don't even know if you could see it over but my gates. You don't want to put it in front of the gate? No, somebody will steal it. It's too big to steal. You, know, you don't think so? I would do it in front of the gate. Yeah, maybe in front of the gates. We'd have and to. then um, well, what we had a, Peter and I went to a Halloween party and I was um, Little Red Riding Hood. Okay. Which is hot. And yeah. then he's a wolf. And he had like a wolf head that he wore for like a couple photos and took it off. I think before we had kids, like we were do- – the trick-or-treating happened. And yeah. he did exactly this. He came out and did the wolf face. Yeah. And the kid and the kids screamed and we felt so bad, you know? Yeah. And then we didn't realize that one time we were just doing it for fun and it freaked out our cat so much. Really? Because it yeah. looks like a fucking wolf. I know. Yeah, that's not good. No, it is mean. It is really mean. Last story. Steve Harvey sets the record straight. Um, on Marjorie, his wife, cheating rumors. So for some reason, these rumors started that she was uh, cheating with her bodyguard and chef. Yeah. Which, by the way, how nice if you have a chef who also doubles as, as a bodyguard driver. And fuck you. And- <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and they're just like, mm, I don't know. I Like, what do you think? And I just am like... <sighs> I always think any of these rumors, like, unless there's an actual girl that comes forward. Yeah. Like, with, you know, like, um, Jesse James and Sandra Bullock. Right. Like, when that girl came forward, that tattooed porn star. Oh, right, right, right. That was yeah. like, here's the letters. Here's yeah. where I went to his place and screwed him on this couch. Mm-hmm. And I have, you know, and there was no doubt that it was true. Then you yeah. found out there were all those others. Right. I just feel like anybody can just say these things. Right. Like, or send it to Dumois or whatever. Yeah. I saw Heather's husband, Peter Tobias, at a gay bar. Uh-huh. Oh, I mean, not worried. that she would post something like that, but yeah. she could. Because she's like, I'm not saying it's true. Right. I'm not. And then, yeah. you know, and he really wasn't. One time there was a rumor about me cheating. Oh, really? I was so flattered. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Who were you cheating with? They're just like, oh, she cheats on her husband when she's like on the road or something. Really? And I was like, oh my God, I love that. Yeah. But if I did cheat on the road, yeah, then I would be more panicked. And I think right. then maybe I would be like, I have got to put these rumors to rest. Yeah. But I think when you, you know that there's absolutely nothing. Right. You're like, I don't. So I think if you are cheating, the yeah. thing to do is not to get upset about it. Uh-huh. To be like, all right. Right, right. 
and wait till real evidence comes, but yeah. be like, mm-hmm. thanks for thinking I can get laid. That like, I'm nice. pretty busy. Yeah. You have to act like that. And your audience, I mean, I don't even know if there's anybody out there for you to cheat with and your shows, you know? It's like, oh, it's like women and married couples and stuff. And gay guys. Yeah, and gay guys. Yeah. I know. It's a tough one. This guy booked a villa for his family for the first vacation 11 years mm-hmm. in Spain, and it was all a fake thing. Yeah, I've heard this. Got there. No one was there to greet him at the airport. Mm-hmm. When he tried to call, text, WhatsApp, whatever, no one answered. Like the address didn't exist. I he mean, already gave them two grand. Now he's stuck spot. in Spain. These scams are so easy to spot from a mile away. You know, I don't know how people get caught up in them, but I could tell, like, if I read the whole story, I'd be like showing you the red flags yeah. along the way. Of right. That. You know, it's always, yeah. Just rent the hotel. I mean, what are you doing? Well, he had a family of five. Yeah. I don't know. I do think, I mean, I do think you have to, there are those stories of, there's so many stories. Right. So many that there's like hidden cameras, you know, and then of course there's too many rules and all that. But then there's also like, there's times when it's been double booked. Right. And you get there and somebody's already there. And you need to be more like the Frangiolas and just never go on vacation <laughs> ever. We went to Jellystone Park, which is a camp, a Yogi Bear themed campground. <laughs> this is all true. That's where we went for our vacations. Yelly, Jellystone Park, five o'clock every night in a golf cart. Yogi Bear would drive around the, <laughs> would drive around the campsite and wave to the kids and throw candy out from the back of the golf cart. And the kids would run after it and pick it up. That was a vacation. Nobody was scammed. No. <laughs> Peter always will say if the kids ever complain about anything. Right. He'll be like, well, maybe you'd like to um, go to a Motel 6 right. and sleep in the bathtub while I snore because that's what I lived through as a kid. That was his vacation? Yeah. His dad would snore wow. when he was on a swim meet trip and he couldn't escape the, the sound. He had to and they're sleep all in the same room. So then he would sleep in the bathtub. Wow. And I'm like, well, it's never going to happen because yeah. we're never going to go to the Motel 6 yeah. To make these kids suffer. Right. So like, yeah. what's the point of your story? Like, it's just like, they're always like, dad, like, stop. It's yeah. Always, yeah. I'm like, you go to the Motel 6 and get back in the bathtub. Chris, tell everyone what your next, well, our, we have a show together. We have a show together. We're coming we to- We are uh, coming to Sacramento. Sacramento, San Francisco. Um, On the uh, September 29th, big show, big live show. Sacramento the 29th, San Francisco the We need 30th. to take like a good like- photo for that right now okay and then and then san francisco is saturday night the 30th yeah and what else do you have chris uh well next friday night the first of september i'm at the Montserrat winery in like temecula fallbrook california fun. i know that's a last minute i've thing. been to the wineries yeah in so, temecula very i don't know fun. if i'm pronouncing that correctly but i'll be there then i'm at mcgoobies in baltimore the september 13th baltimore mcgoobies you ever been there no but i like it's the been name. a while I've been there. Pittsburgh Improv. Fun. 14th September. I've never been to Pittsburgh in my life, ever. Have you played Pittsburgh Improv? I feel like I haven't. Yeah, I've heard of good things. I don't think I have. Things. Okay, good. And then I'm at Bethlehem, uh, Pennsylvania, the next night, September 15th, at the Arts Quest, um, you know, Steel Stacks Arts Quest. You know where it is. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Just go to Frangiola. Frang- fun. cover to cover. Yes. It's my podcast. Come over, listen to that. Everything else. How's everything over here? Everything's good over on Juicy Scoop? Yes. Wild time. The summer is <laughs> over. Yeah. How do you uh, feel about summer being over? You want it to continue or are you happy with? I'm going to say something bold and I think people should, you know, how people want to get rid of like daylight savings. Mm-hmm. I think we need to adjust the summertime. Why is it that people are getting out like end of May and then have to go to back to school in August when it's cold in June, it's cold in July if the world is changing, why? If I was the mayor, okay, okay, yeah. of L.A. or any other small town, mm-hmm. I would re- say let's re- let's look at our weather, okay? Yeah, the best months are, aug, you know, July, August, or middle of July, August, right. September. It's hot all the way till middle of October. Why don't we start summer later? Why are we starting? It's like every year it starts earlier. Yeah. Why are kids going back to school like August tenth? I know. We might have to work on that. I really think it should be 
till the end of September is summer. It should be July, yeah, August, September, because those are the better weather months. Yeah. That's a good idea. I am gonna I am gonna work on that. Let's get that and going. And I don't know why no one else has thought of it. Yeah. But you know what? You can take that. I'll take yeah. I'm not gonna run for any political office, but if I I'm, do I don't I do you imagine me running for it? Oh God, I can't even take the people that aren't happy with the things I say on my own podcast. Yeah. I'd be destroyed. Yeah, I know. It's I don't know why anybody would want to do that. I know. That's a rough go. Anyway. anyway um Okay. Well, I love you. Goodbye. Thank you. HeatherMcDonald.net for all for those shows to get the tickets because there is still some tickets left for both those shows for Chris and I. Excellent. Thank you.